Hello everyone! Game and Chick here once again with another review. Well, sorta. This one will differ from my normal review format, as I want to take a deep dive into something as big as Mario's 35th anniversary and the release of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. For anyone new watching, if you like what you see in this video today, please share, like, or subscribe to my channel for future updates. Now, enough with the ramble. Let's get on to it! Dear Mario, Please subscribe to my channel. I have made a review for you. Yours truly, Princess Amy. Peach! It's hard to believe it's already been 35 years since the release of the first Super Mario Bros. on the NES. And who would have thought that a little game with a plump Italian man from Brooklyn would not only steal my heart, but the hearts of millions of gamers worldwide, and become a phenomenon the likes of which the world has rarely seen? The name Super Mario means so many different things depending on who you talk to. You can speak to one random person, and they will tell you how they've grown up with the games all their life, and they absolutely adore them. But at the same time, you can talk to someone else on the other side of the spectrum, and they will tell you that Mario is childish and just for kids, or that it's a failure when compared to other franchises. But to me, the name Super Mario as a whole means so much more than a simple Game good. <laughs> Game bad. It was at a very young age when I got into the Super Mario Bros. series. However, I cannot for the life of me remember which exact game I played first, so I couldn't tell you one of those heartfelt my first game stories that people give. But what I can tell you about today is my own personal perspective on the games themselves, what the franchise means to me, and how I feel about the future of the franchise itself. Also, don't worry, the title is not clickbait, we will get to 3D All-Stars very shortly. But I feel perspective is key in understanding what not only led us to this moment in time with its release, but how I personally feel about the series too. So with that long-winded intro out of the way, let's go! As the 35th anniversary of Super Mario slowly approached us, many of us were anticipating Nintendo doing something really big to celebrate their jolly mascot. But we weren't exactly sure what they would do. I personally was hoping that Nintendo would actually make reward points relevant again and allow us to purchase a rare physical collectible for loyal members who buy their games yearly and stash up our points. But who am I kidding? The newly implemented reward point program that came along with the Nintendo Switch hasn't really been worth it thus far. But that's a whole other topic for another day. So what exactly did they have in store for us? Well, it was something so big, so outside the box, so mind-blowing, no one saw it coming. No one ever could have guessed. If you detected sarcasm in my voice, then you probably already can tell I'm stacking a pile of BS higher than the tip of a pokey. On September 3rd, 2020, Nintendo's worst kept secret was finally announced to the whole world, and it was Super Mario 3D All-Stars for the Nintendo Switch, a three-game compilation of entries into the Super Mario series that defined their console generation. Super Mario 64 on the Nintendo 64, with its groundbreaking exploration and sandbox style of gameplay that revolutionized the industry for its time. Super Mario Sunshine on the GameCube, that showed us just how creative 3D platforming games can actually become with the right elements, such as Flood, and Super Mario Galaxy on the Nintendo Wii, that made us forget, at least for one fleeting moment, that motion control was not just a gimmick, but it could actually be the, uh, the, uh, the way of the future. Oh, that's it, the way of the future. But to see and understand that future, we must first go back to the past to play some games that suck ass, huh? Wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. 
let's try this again. <clears throat> to see the future, we must proceed to the past. Okay, okay, hold up, hold up. Way too far. Can we fast forward time just a little bit, please? Uh-oh. Knack is back, baby. But this is way too far again. Can we please get it right this time? Because this is absolute Garbage! You know what? I'll take it. Super Mario 64 On September 29th, 1996, the world was greeted to a game that would not only become a national phenomenon, but would also pave the way for all 3D platformers going forward. And that game was, of course, Super Mario 64. Now, while it was the 3D platformer that defined the generation and its genre, contrary to popular belief, it was not the first of its kind. Jumping Flash, a 3D performer, was released on the PlayStation 1 and was developed by Exact and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. But Jumping Flash was not your traditional 3D platformer. Instead of letting you have a full 360 view of your character at all times, it went for the middle ground approach in its use of polygons and first-person mode that harken back to games like Star Fox on the Super Nintendo and games like the early Wolfstein series. As a little snot-nosed, loudmouth, spoiled brat of a kid, I received my Nintendo 64 from my parents and two games for the system, Pilot Wing 64 and Super Mario 64. As a kid, I never thought about games like I do now, and that's why I wish I kind of was still that little kid who wasn't corrupted by teraflops, frame rates, and console wars. With having only been used to side-scrollers at the time, in which you just took your character from point A to point B, Super Mario absolutely blew me away. Immediately, you're thrown into this open-area sandbox world with no clear limits. You can run and monkey around and flip and wahoo to your heart's content over here, then over there, shoot yourself like a crazy person in a cannon, and even completely cheat in a race against Koopa the Quick and give him PTSD for the rest of his life knowing he lost to an overweight spaghetti-eating plumber. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night, I can feel my leg. But it will be all right. Mario can just supply him with meds to take care of that. I mean, he was a doctor, you know. With Mario 64, for the first time in a video game, at least just from my own personal opinion, it felt like it was the first time I was actually in control of the character and the world and not the other way around. Being able to move from room to room and unlocking all the secrets the castle had to offer was a mind-blowing experience for a kid of my age. Being able to use C buttons to spin the camera around my character and get a better view of my surroundings, or even enter a first-person mode, which allowed me to find stars with ease that I might not have been able to see otherwise, to my little brain was unheard of. In Mario 64, Mario himself controls like a dream. The joystick controls are immediately responsive and allow the player themselves to choose the style of play they wish to use. If you want to go at your own pace because you aren't used to the 3D platformers, the game's default difficulty setting is easy enough for you to pick up and play regardless of age or skill. Now, I always considered myself anywhere from decent to good at Mario 64, but some players out there in the speedrunning community take it to absolute insane levels. Which is crazy to think that here we are, 24 years later after its original release, that hardcore fans are still finding new ways to maneuver and beat the game. With its release on Nintendo Switch, Super Mario 64 gets an uptick in graphics and feels at home with the Switch Pro Controller. Now instead of using the C buttons to move the camera, you are able to use the right stick and move it around, which feels a lot more intuitive than the C buttons did previously. Mario himself also now controls with the way more comfortable left stick of the Pro Controller instead of the blister and blood-inducing joystick of the Nintendo 64. However, while the controls are vastly improved and the image quality is slightly upgraded, a lot of people feel it doesn't go far enough to allow itself to be called a remaster. But it is what it is. You got a boost in graphics, bigger controls, and a smoother experience. I fail to see what else there is to complain about here if I have to be honest. But I can see where that other side is coming from. So they aren't necessarily wrong for feeling that way either.
Super Mario Sunshine Right off the bat, Super Mario Sunshine was at a huge disadvantage from the moment it got announced to the very day it was released. Immediately from the get-go, it was put in a position of damned if you do and damned if you don't, due to one problem and one problem only. It just happened to come after the genre-changing Super Mario 64. This is the type of family situation you have when your big brother or sister is the family favorite and always gets praised for their every accomplishment while you yourself are in the corner of the room envious and sulking because you know for a fact that you did get a few things better than the golden boy or girl, but still, you do not get the acknowledgement you think you deserve. This is Super Mario Sunshine in a nutshell. Super Mario Sunshine plays drastically different than the franchise's previous entry, Super Mario 64, which is both a great thing and also a really bad thing depending on who you speak to. As we start the game, we say goodbye Mushroom Kingdom and hello Isle Dufino. Immediately you start getting a headache. Your vision gets blurry. Your eardrums pulsate violently and begin to bleed. You wonder to yourself, what is happening? What's this icky paint like goop? It's moving! And as you come back to your senses, no, no, you realize, Don't touch that stuff. oh wait, it's just bad voice acting. To be fair, it's not as bad as another infamous game in the Mario franchise that we all know and love. <laughs> Upon arriving to the Summer Island, you're framed for a crime you didn't commit because every single one of these island inhabitants are colorblind. Like, seriously, how? I didn't kill my wife! After you are found guilty and thrown in jail, you're given the task to clean up the paint like goop all over the island with your trusty water pack named Flood. With Flood, you're able to open up ways of exploration and combat that you weren't able to do in previous entries. Here in Sunshine, your main form of exploration to get around involves using the Flood in cooperation with wall jumping, triple jumping, and side flipping to get extra height or extra distance depending on your destination. This is where Sunshine gets the advantage over Mario 64. Because while that entry had tighter and, in my opinion, more responsive controls, Sunshine has the better creative use of its game mechanics than Mario 64 did. Being able to slide down a ramp of water, jump and hop at the right moment, set off your water pack, and pop off a rope and go flying in the sky makes you feel like an absolute badass. Well, when you actually pull it off, that is. Combat is the second thing Sunshine has over Mario 64 because long gone are the days of tossing an enemy and slamming them to the ground. Now you must think about how you're going to approach an enemy. Are you going to hover over an area of effect attack? Or will you torture poor Petey the Piranha by filling up his fat tummy with water before stomping his weird little belly button? I say, stomp away. With Super Mario Sunshine as the second game offered to us in Super Mario 3D All-Stars, one would think there would be a lot more positives than negative to go around. But honestly, after playing it for quite some time, in many ways, it kind of feels worse. The graphics are much improved and look way sharper, the game feels and runs buttery smooth, but the slipperiness of Mario's movements still feels very off-putting, maybe even more so than the GameCube version. Couple in the lack of analog control and the sometimes clumsy nature of the camera, and you get a mixed bag of quote-unquote remaster. It's definitely one of the more polarizing 3D Mario games out there, but it has enough charm to make it worthy of at least one full playthrough. So give it a shot. Super Mario Galaxy After the mixed reaction of Super Mario Sunshine on GameCube, Nintendo knew they had to do something to rejuvenate the Mario franchise, and once again push the limits on people's conception of what the peak of 3D platforming can be. Well, we asked for it and they answered, and the answer was in the form of Super Mario Galaxy on the Nintendo Wii. Released on November 12, 2007 in North America, Mario Galaxy ups the ante for our happy-go-lucky hero as he looks forward to attending the Centennial Star Festival that he was invited to by the woman who will friendzone him for life, Princess Peach. But right on schedule as always, Bowser shows up to crash the party with his legions of airships and… UFOs? What the hell? Now being the hero he is, Mario jumps into action to save the day, only to be defeated swiftly by Bowser's minion, Kamek, and left falling to the world below. Upon waking up, you're greeted to very important characters in the game, the Lumas. After befriending them after a quick game of hide-and-seek, they take you to their enchantress known as Rosalina, and she basically tells you you better do what she says or you won't see your woman ever again, and you know what that means, right? No more free cake! So with that in mind, we set off to explore the galaxy and see what this game has to offer us in comparison to Sunshine. And just between you and me, spoiler alert, a lot more. 
In Super Mario Galaxy, the open area sandbox style has been completely abandoned and instead replaced with a more linear and cramped structure of level design than the previous two 3D Mario entries. But going linear is probably one of the better decisions Nintendo has made in recent years, as it allowed the developers to focus on each individual area at a time and utilize their new gameplay mechanic to the fullest, gravity. On Nintendo Wii, you utilize the motion controls of the Wii Remote and nunchuck maneuver your way around each planet, hovering and soaring from planet to planet with the flick of your wrist via a warp star, all while finding collectible star bits that you can use as currency to unlock new levels or stun your enemies with. But now with its release on Nintendo Switch, how exactly does this setup even work? Does it even work? Well, the answer to that is both a yes and no. The Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons acts as your replacement for the Wii Remote, and for the most part, it feels great and very responsive. However, there are some issues that crop up from time to time, such as the pointer you use to collect your star bits being off-center and needs to be realigned over and over. It's not a huge deal, but definitely not as accurate as a Wii Remote and sensor bar combination. Motion consoles aside though, does the rest of the game still hold up on the Nintendo Switch? Hell yes it does! Right from the start of your adventure, you know you're in for one amazing ride as that fully orchestrated music hits your ears for the first time and you're greeted to a wild, wacky, and wondrous galaxy that heads at Nintendo thrown to your face. You got flying, you have puzzles, you have creative boss fights, you get a second waifu, you get everything that made Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine great, all wrapped up into one sweet tasting cannoli. Nothing about this game is inherently bad. The graphics look better than ever, Joy-Cons control great even with a few mishaps, and the game runs blissfully smooth. Pure and simple, Mario Galaxy to me is nothing short of a masterpiece. At the end of the day, the collection of Super Mario 3D All-Stars houses three of the best games the Mario franchise has to offer, with two of the three games being Mario 64 and Mario Galaxy, completely redefining the platformer genre entirely. Each game in this collection, whether you grew up with it or are just playing it for the first time, has something to offer every type of gamer that has an interest in platformers in general, or even not at all. The appeal is far-reaching. From Mario 64's open sandbox play that allows you to explore Princess Peach's castle to the fullest and uncover all its mysteries, to the creativity and outside-the-box thinking of Mario Sunshine and its use of Flood, to the beautifully orchestrated and whimsical charm and creativity of Mario Galaxy. These games remind us of just how high this franchise and 3D platforming can go. I stated early on in this titanic-length review that Super Mario as a series means much more to me than calling them a bad game or even a good game. To me, Mario as a character represents the childlike wonder that we all used to have growing up, always being so happy and go lucky and ready to face any challenge with a smile and hope. Mario never gives up. It's a franchise that to me represents imagination, creativity, and the sense of adventure we used to have at a young age, but seemingly lost as we grew older. But no matter how old we get, no matter what rough times come for us, we can always go back to this little pudgy plumber, and even if it's just for a moment, become a kid once more. It's been this way for the last 35 years, and it will continue to do so for 35 years more.